Last video I made, I talked about a video game series that means a lot to me, turning into a streaming show that's really bad. The artifact stands in space! No! The artifact stands in space! This time, I thought I'd switch things up and talk about a video game that I mostly like, turning into a show that's very good. The Last of Us. There's a lot of praise going around for this show. It got accolades for breaking the video game movie curse. Pedro Pascal is having the worst press tour of his life. <laughs> no. And its finale had more viewers than House of the Dragon. Like, damn, people really like this thing. And I happen to be one of them. To put it simply, the show is very good, and people are correct in saying that this is a faithful adaptation. The writing is sharp, the characters feel perfect, Pedro Pascal does a great Joel, Bella Ramsey is exceptional as Ellie, Nick Offerman turns an incredible standalone episode of television as Bill. The show itself is headed by Neil Druckmann, the game director for the original Last of Us and Last of Us Part II, along with Craig Mazin, who's known for writing the thrilling series, Superhero Movie. I got a better shitter down on too. I'm gonna blow that thing up. Dana! In all seriousness though, when this show first got announced, I just finished Chernobyl, and as soon as I saw Mason's name attached, I got super excited. That show is probably the only thing to genuinely scare me. Like, tell me that diver scene at the end of the second episode isn't nerve-wracking as fuck. This guy is perfect for that job. But, as much as I can praise and recommend this show, it does raise a question that I've had in my mind for a while. What exactly is the future for video game adaptations? Because yes, this show is very good at using its source material, but in a way it's also kind of too good. Like, so much time and energy is going into recreating scenes from a game, frame by frame, to wow you and get a raise from fans of the original, that it feels like it's forgetting how to be its own thing. And it's not like the show doesn't know how to do that. The first episode is a great example. It's faithful to the first couple hours of the game, but it also creates these scenes that weren't in the game to begin with. The third episode is probably the strongest example, focusing on Bill and his partner Frank. Bill's segment in the show is completely different from the source material. It's a similar idea, but the execution focuses on two people building a relationship that's eventually growing into a bittersweet end, rather than Joel and Ellie just exploring another town with traps everywhere. Before we go further into this, let's really think about what makes a video game special. To me, it comes down to a simple word, interaction. You can move, touch, talk, bite, shoot, run, duck, drive, swing. You can interact with a world you don't live in. We're at a point where video games have never been more realistic. The details are so crisp, the lighting is almost perfect, the characters look and sound like people. We're so advanced at this kind of stuff that progression in gaming hardware is at a standstill. Don't believe me? Ask someone what's the must play game on the PlayStation 5. So, now that we're here, Let's ask ourselves, what do we gain from turning video games into television or movies? You see, a game like Castlevania has some cool ideas. It's got cool characters, monsters, settings, music, writing, but it also looks like this. So if you heard Netflix is making a 2D animated show that's fully voice acted and several seasons long, you'd probably expect there to be some notable differences. But these two work in hand in hand because where you might lose something like interactivity in Castlevania, you get new takes on characters and designs, or even ideas you might not have considered while playing it. Now, looking ahead at The Last of Us, considering what we've just went over, what benefit does putting this on a silver or small screen give? That balance of taking away something unique that you could only find in a video game in favor of showing something realistic or to give this illusion that it's come to life isn't as good of a deal as one might expect. Well, there's always the people that might be interested in this story, but don't want to spend 15 hours opening empty drawers, walking through hallways, getting the same flicker gift animation over and over, dealing with bullshit self mechanics. For this example, we're going to take a look at the ninth episode, When We Are In Need. So expect some spoilers for both versions of The Last of Us. Now in this part of the game, Joel has been injured badly after an encounter with some raiders in Colorado. Ellie is forced to take Reigns here and guide him towards shelter. The usual routine of following Joel across the country has come to a stop. Now she has to live off the wilderness alone and keep an unconscious Joel alive. Through her attempts, she comes across a group of survivors being led by a man named David. She's skeptical at first to their aid, but Joel's condition isn't getting any better. Maybe we could uh, trade you for some of that meat there. What do you need? Weapons? Ammo? Clothes? Medicine! Do you have any antibiotics? We do? Back at the camp. You're welcome to follow us I'm back. not following you anywhere! While David's hunting friend goes to retrieve the supplies, Ellie and David are left alone and forced to fight off a horde of infected, finding themselves constantly on the run. 
They eventually hold their ground, and Ellie lets some of her guard down, which is where Ellie learns about David's motivations. Now, this winter, that's been especially cruel. A few weeks back, I uh, sent a group of men out a nearby town to look for food. Only a few came back. They said that the others had been uh, slaughtered by a crazy man. <laughs> and get this, he's a crazy man traveling with a little girl. You see, everything happens for a reason. <sighs> Ellie returns to Joel, but knows David and his hunters are on her tail, so she flees in order to lead them away. As a result, Ellie is captured, and soon Joel regains consciousness. Joel is now on the brink of losing another child close to him, and is willing to get her back by any means necessary. I ain't telling you shit! That's alright. I believe him. No, wait! Joel fights through raiders, Ellie breaks free and fights David, resulting in her taking the life of a man who nearly killed her. If it weren't for Left Behind, it's what I would consider to be the best part of Last of Us. What makes this special though, is how much time it all takes. I can easily say, this is the hardest part of the game. For the past several hours, it's been searching and scavenging with little skirmishes and encounters with enemies in between. With this chapter though, items are even more scarce than they already are, and there's very little downtime to search for ammo and supplies. Now that you're playing as Ellie, you're far more limited in weapons and equipment, but you do get a knife so you don't have to make shivs. Even when you do get to play as Joel, he's slower as part of his recovery, so sneaking up on people is a lot more difficult. You're feeling the desperation of both these characters because you're really playing them. The moment David reveals his true motive is devastating because you just spent an hour trying to stay alive and help each other through hell. Joel's section is a race against time and you feel every second of his desperation to find Ellie. So let's take a look at the HBO version of this chapter. It's well acted, it's put to life well visually, the cold barren forest is intact. They even do the final confrontation with Ellie and David Justice, and Bella Ramsey does a great recreation of this very pitiful moment in Ellie's arc. Yet, all this attention to detail, all this polish, it's just not the same. That interactivity and time a player has to put in that makes this chapter so good is now missing. When the reveal happens, like, yeah, it's well delivered and probably got a gasp out of some people, but it's nowhere near the same effect as in the game. What might have taken half an hour for some people is now a five to 10 minute reveal. And that's what ultimately makes these last two chapters suffer. As accurate as they are, the pacing's fucked up now. This kind of story just doesn't work in the 50 minutes to an hour time span the show gives it. So it just feels like you're watching some guy's cutscene compilation on YouTube. It's just more or less the same exact thing. That being said though, sometimes this show has the lack of a game element work in its favor. For instance, when Joel and Ellie meet up with Tommy. It starts with the traverse over some terrain, leading to the two of them to a dam, followed by a brief encounter with some guards, which turn out to be people from Tommy's settlement. This leads to Tommy and Joel exploring the dam passively while it's getting repaired. This part of the game is actually pretty short, and it's mostly an excursion to see the nice environments. But towards the end, there's an attack by bandits, and now you're defending the dam with Tommy and his repair crew. Sounds like a cool idea. Start with an exploration segment, introduce some new characters, along with a familiar face, then transition to a combat section that might catch you off guard. But there's one little problem. Naughty Dog's level design doesn't work for this stage. Throughout the game, you'll notice these fucking big ass rectangular blocks of cover. They could be crates, furniture, debris, whatever. But no matter what, it's always that same fucking layout that just screams, there's gonna be a firefight later, get ready. It's the most obvious thing in the world and it just totally puts you out of the experience. The HBO series on the other hand, doesn't have to put up with that shit. In this version, the dam element is just completely removed. Ellie and Joel are exploring Wyoming, they come across armed men on horseback who turn out to be working with Tommy. And majority of the episode is spent showing Ellie a life without danger lurking around every corner. Ellie learns about Sarah and creates this brief rift between her and Joel. Joel tries to get Tommy to escort Ellie to Colorado rather than doing it himself. Since this narrative remains as strong in the game and isn't bogged down by stupid shit, I'd say this segment works a lot better. There is one minor complaint I have about this section though. As some of you may know, one of the creative liberties taken was the outbreak starts in 2003 rather than the game state of 2013. This of course is so they can have this deep meaning thing where present day is <gasps> 2023! During Joel's and Ellie's brief conflict, Joel mentions how You have no idea what loss is. Great line, but 
It doesn't work. You see, now that the outbreak started in 2003, Joel can't really know what loss is because the comic didn't come out until 2008. While The Last of Us might be the groundwork on this video, Really, I wanted to address the idea of turning video games into movies or television as a whole. People have been wanting some kind of Last of Us show or movie for years now. Since the story is very cinematic with a focus on defined themes and rich characters along with this very brutal environment and setting that often puts characters in troubling situations. Recently, there's been a new wave of these video game adaptations. Most of these I haven't watched so I can't really tell you if they're good or bad, but the demand is definitely a surprise to me. For the past year, it feels like Sony has been announcing a new adaptation for every exclusive they have. Like late 2022, they announced a Death Stranding movie. Seriously? How the fuck are you gonna do that? It's already a giant fucking movie. It's super realistic looking, and they've already got well-known actors that have been in actual movies or television with their likeness being recreated one-to-one. -one. It's made by a guy that loves that shit. What could you possibly gain from making it an actual movie? It's already fucking With how successful the show is, I'm partially afraid that it might set a bad precedent with adaptations in the future. Because what's more important? Making everything as accurate as possible to please the capital G gamers? Or looking at what makes the original as great as it is, and building something new on those ideas? The Last of Us proves that both can be possible, but if you ask me, the latter is far more interesting.